So now it's 11.45 and we're going to start immediately. And our topic today is embracing big data workflow in cloud native environment with data locality. And now I want to introduce ourselves. My name is Yao Xiao Liu from Cardera. And I'm mostly working on the Apache Hadoop, HDFS, and Ozone projects. And I'm the Apache Hadoop committer and PMC. And Sammy is also the a member of the Ozone and Apache Hold, the Hadoop, HDFS, and also the um, Apache Hadoop committer and PMC member. And here is the outline of our talk today. First, we are going to review the big data evolution in cloud native environment, what challenges we met, and we're going to introduce data locality and why it matters, why we need to pay attention to it, especially when it's used in the cloud native environment and its demand. Next, we are going to have a look at the storage of the data locality and how uh, we're fetching this uh, locality of this data and provide some reliability and functions improvement. Next, I'm going to introduce the Ozone project and, and Apache Hadoop and how to use in KBS and also its philosophy of using it. And there will be a Q&A session as well. If you have any questions, we welcome one of you to propose questions for us. And next is the challenges in the cloud native environment. And the goals of this environment is utilizing some open source software to make it into the launchable microservices, publishable services. And we're going to mount it into the microservices and then uh, microservices and deploy it in one container so that it can have a dynamic orchestration so that it can optimize its resource allocations. As for the big data itself, the earliest big data is actually from, it's based on the Google GFS paper and also the end. The, and also the engineers of some open source providers and also the utilizing their structures as well. The basic idea is that the storage and computation nodes are mainly co-located. The benefits of this is that when you need some compute resources and need some storage, you can minimize your um, your query on the website on the webs to get your data so that it can help you to better parallelize your um, your data computing and also increase the level of your data calculation and you can see the workloads are going to be increased in times and you can see there are some distributed file systems and also we have some of the um, scheduling of the system, for example, Yarn and Cluster and resource managers like Mesos and Pat Mesos. And based on that, there will be different kind of the uh, workload management and if even some of the analytics workload management and like uh, these kinds of uh, workload Load, it's going to have some hype job and also the it builds upon the yon and HP base and HDFS and, and there were some other workload will utilize the spark and MR as well. So it will going to have very tight coupling between the computing and the storage so you can guarantee its efficiency. However, these functions will have some challenges as well. First, how can we schedule the utilization of these resources? And there were some nodes may have um, very relatively poorer computing and storage power 
maybe there was some homogenic data so that its resources do not have the same capability as other nodes. When your storage need to get access to your local resources, although you you have very strong resource, but you cannot utilize it because of the accessibility problem, then it will uh, reduce the efficiency in the scheduling of the resources. Sometimes you have a lot of computing resources that has been idle, and also some of the nodes have a, have some overloaded problems. The utilization of the clusters may not achieve its optimized state. And there was some scalability problem as well. You can imagine if the whole cluster need to get horizontal scaling, and you can scale it the computing nodes and the storage at the same time. It may have the unified requirements on hardware and software for the computing nodes. The scaling may have higher demand of resources, and the storage may be more stable, and computing may have higher dynamic requirements. For example, it may be able to use a spin up and down some of the nodes dynamically. So the result is that if you are not able to make it into the homogenic nodes, to deploy it as homogenic nodes, then there will be some problems. And in this way, your hardware resources may not be fully used. And sometimes the computing resources are available, but the storage is not satisfying or meeting the standards, then that will be a waste of this kind of computing resources. So during the big data evolution, we can see a lot of the code developed system developed from the coexisting system into some separate system. And in these clusters, we will have some XD, X, XDS clusters. It's just managing the uh, storage. It's just for the storage clusters. It's not relying on the computing clusters. And you can dynamically adjust your computing clusters. You can scale up and down so that you can guarantee the overall operations can achieve the optimal configurations. And in, with this framework, you are able to achieve very high utilization of your resources, and also the storage will have achieve very good effects. However, the overall performance will have some problem as well because all the access of the storage devices has no locality concept, and all of those assets need to uh, rely on the network connecting the computing and storage. And although we have increased the speed of the network, however, in the big data environment, and and there were some para parallel data interaction. If we need to guarantee the access on different ends, limited in 58 seconds, and there were 50 uh, milliseconds. So we need to address some stream time as well. However, with under this framework, we are not able to achieve these standards and are not able to implement these standards as well. So we will get to the third phase of the big data evolution. Originally, although we said separated the computing and the storage. We also utilizing the hy hybrid cloud. In the multi-cloud, there were different kinds of cloud provider are providing this kind of elastic computing nodes. And you can spin up and down, scale, spin up and down of this kind of nodes, just like how we utilize the big data as well. It can um, it can modify its computing power. And based on object stores or cloud, based on cloud, if you need this data on press on premise, on on the cloud, and then it going to spin up this data to the on-premise clouds or the private clouds or the local cloud to do some of the uh, distributed storage so that for those have very high requirement on the latencies 
The storage will have more efficient services based on this framework, but there are still some problems in this framework. If you need to get access to it, to access of these objects, a lot of these objects is based on the um, ultimate consistency, and a lot of utilization of big, big data is and it's assumed that they will have very strong consistency. And once you write the data and you need to read the same data that you just written, however, in the object storage, there is no discount kind of guarantee. So we will see a lot of big data projects is doing some of the local set metadata handling and on, on your own prime or the private clouds to do some of this access so that it can stabilize it. It can get the consistency just like on prem. And next is the reliability problems. Once you put your data on the cloud, there will other clouds copying your data. How can you guarantee that in um, different applications in different places like in the North America, in Asia or in Europe? How can you guarantee that the dif different places can get access to the closest source instead of from the further places? And as for the reliability, if you just have a local copy, and if there is a problem in the local data center, the data will not have a reliable replica. Just now we have mentioned locality. Locality is a very important concept in big data. What is locality? It can be divided into different types. The basic thought is that you want to put the data in those places needed for compute computing. So what is the data type? You can divide it into the following types. And this procedure able to get this data from the storage. So this is the process local. If it's not in the same nodes, maybe it's in some of documents stored in the local nodes, then it's the node local concept. And there's another case that it's not on the local nodes. Maybe it's on the same suite or the rack. So or the same rack. Maybe it's a little bit slower than the local access. But but it's better to it's better and quicker than you to um, accessing other data centers. So this is the third layer of locality. The fourth layer is that maybe you need to cross different racks, then there will be a bigger latency between different ends or terminals. To guarantee the locality in big data, we can have a lot of benefits. For example, its end-to-end -end latency can be shorter. It can have a an um, overall throughput will be higher and reduce the unnecessary network traffic so that the big data clusters are able to complete more tasks and jobs so that the utilization of the cluster will be higher and it will have a reliability guarantee because it will tell you for different allocations what copy you should use not just based on the three copies in your data center or on the locations you have and it will be a, a very good way to prevent any um, accidents happen. And when they are fetching this data, they can aware the locality of this data, and also they are able to tell the, the tasks are doing the scheduling about the blocks of this data, for example. And it's a, it's a split of it in the Apache, and also if it can base on its locality level, just like what I mentioned, the red local, the uh, process local, and the node local, etc. And this is locality level of different data.
Next, let's take a look at uh, how does data storage function support data locality. Speaking of the storage layer, we have we must mention HDFS. HDFS, since its about its inception, there has already been more than a decade. It's been developed into a very stable storage system, and mainly it's divided into metadata layer. And the meta metadata layer is on the name node, and all the metadata in the name node were loaded in uh, internal memory. So it's very quickly to access uh, the uh, internal memory. It can reach 200k pay per ops second. And it also support a larger uh, uh, memory. Normally, it can reach hundreds of petabytes in capacity. And a single node can support thousands of uh, uh, thousands of nodes per cluster supported and it cannot further scale horizontally it also it's also very consistent and resilient to different types of uh, disk failures or node failures next this slide is about a uh, HDFS locality how it is uh, delivered I mentioned there's a master node and data node and master node is to maintain the metadata while the other is to maintain the corresponding uh, modules each file has a list of blocks corresponding within the file. For example, in the first uh, application scenario, we have a HDF uh, as plan co-located. This client might be a spark job or a metro reduce job. And it, it needs to access a hive file. And the hive file gave uh, the root and the client will access the name node where are the corresponding block and it knows where the, the plants come from the client comes from and it knows uh, where the, the blocks are in which client so based on the topological information based on the distances the different data nodes will be categorized uh, based on distances and all this information will be feedback uh, to the name node so all these uh, data sets were trained if you access data node 1 then the preferred uh, data node is data node 1 but if you were to access the same file through data node 2 then it will give a uh, data node 6 instead of a uh, data node 1 because data node 1 is in a different rank and there are some other optimization uh, options for example uh, even if you are accessing a native file local file without secondary read it is done through the network stack to access the file and there will be some additional DCDS so this optimization it means when the local file there are no local client to access the local file then it will directly you know regard the local file block as a certain distance and it will be transmitted to the client and the client can access without uh, the, the stack and naturally in the cloud native environment we will consider you know uh, using open source software stack to deploy applications to run it in, in a part we only need to put it in so that it become uh, a uh, cloud native uh, patented uh, service but there are some challenges for example the sdfs name node has some strength restraints uh, they are all put uh, under the, the them nodes to facilitate the access but the problem is if you have many small files small applications small programs there will be like hundreds of millions of uh, files and need special tuning and it will take up a lot of uh, memory to support the regular function and if you were to restart and upgrade the system it will take a long time to reboot and the second challenge is uh, the containerized uh, HDFS data node it's not easy because different part the IP is a virtual IP it, it corresponding to the, the, the mapping is different from uh, you know simply building up the topology you need to uh, do additional uh, tuning 
to ensure that the IP address are identical. And there are also some opportunities in the cloud native environment. If we have the storage orchestra, we can ensure that the HDFS, the existing HDFS, can be easily upgraded to, to the cloud native environment and provide more cognitive uh, friendly name service and block service. So we have a more a better services to support our locality. Next, I will ask my colleague Sami to share Ozone and other how Ozone supports data locality. Thank Xiaoyu's introduction. We all know that uh, HDFS. There are some some challenges in uh, uh, applying it. So we need some uh, solutions to cope with uh, uh, these challenges. And HDFS community have spent over ten years in uh, on the development and the marketing. So we have a new open source project called uh, Apache Apache Ozone. Apache Ozone is a target uh, storage uh, system through Hapat protocol to provide a consistent uh, object store. And one of the objectives is to address uh, the HDFS scale problem. We know HDFS uh, clusters, the storage upper limit is like a um, you know, 100 million level. So Ozone's uh, target is to a tr to support over a trillion uh, object. This is one of uh, Ozone's uh, primary object. And second is to support cloud native environment from the very f f from the design of uh, Ozone. It encompasses all these uh, uh, external environment. It supports you know through through Docker through Yarn to deploy in the KBS KKAS. And in the latest uh, release, for it supports uh, CF CSI in terms of uh, security. Ozone supports a uh, couples based uh, and KMS based uh, user encryption and decryption programs and systems so as to meet uh, corporate or enterprise uh, clients' expectations to security. And the object the storage protocol the, uh, is different from uh, S3 and other familiar ones. It can, it's more compatible. It can serve uh, S3 based services or in, based on the object store protocol. We have uh, further extended the S3 gateway and interfaces. That is to say, based on the S3's program, it can seamlessly dock with uh, uh, Ozone. In the meantime, to support a loop uh, this uh, native environment, Ozone have a Hadoop abstract file system. This interface, using this interface, can upload for the upper stream services like uh, Yarn and Spark. It can be seamlessly utilized. Utilize uh, Ozone. There's no modification required. And uh, lastly. Data storage in Ozone is through RAP. The default is uh, three uh, segregation, so it's very secure and reliable. This is uh, Ozone's uh, overview. This can, there used to be a, a name node function. It's divided into two independent services. And name say Ozone Manager, we have a uh, to, to manage, we have also manager to, to manage namespace. Originally, it manages the file to SDFS or the object or the specific uh, data block. But now the we have a separate component called the storage container manager. It's a service, and namespace functions is to divide. We divided it. To enable a more uh, a micro uh, services, and it, the data node is similar to SDFS. You may find that there's a co the concept called container. So container in Ozone 
is a replica. It's a basic u replica unit in HDFS. Block is one unit of uh, replica. Well, in ozone, it's like actually a logic uh, concept, a sequence, a cluster of uh, data sets. The size uh, can, the default size is five gigabyte. It can support up to sixteen gigabyte. So with this new component, the original uh, file to block. Um, Relationship. There's an additional layer, object uh, to container and container to block. And in each container, it can maintain its own block information. So all the metadata does not need to be concentrated in uh, Ozo Manager or SDV uh, controllers internal memory. So the scale is uh, very uh, unique and easy to scale, really. Here, there's a chart showcase uh, the containers architecture so each container have its uh, metadata and the metadata is a key value of uh, start inside it will record in, in which block which block is placed uh, at which location container has two states open and close when it's open it's readable and writable. When the size reached the default set or the threshold, like five gigabyte, then the story container manager will observe this phenomena and will trigger a sequence. So the container will be switched from open to close. Of course, when it's closed, the container is um, uh, an immutable. So it cannot be written again, it can only be read. So the ozone manager can switch the container's state based on the, the data node utilization. So it can be migrated freely. So the data distribution can be um, optimized. It will be, you know, uh, optimized and have an average distribution among different nodes. And now let's talk about uh, the uh, topology support. Uh, Xiaoyu has mentioned based on the topology, we will know the locality information of the data. We can better distribute uh, the resources so that uh, the, the computing node, it will be very close to the computing node to reduce uh, uh, network traffic, more efficient operation. <coughs> If you know HDFS, you know that the topology it supports two layers from the root to rack and under rack there's a node. So three layers, let's call it. <coughs> now the cloud native environment, the virtual environment, the original three layers are insufficient to represent the network topology. So in Ozone, we provide a user customizable model so the user based on its unique uh, environment can customize any layer of a topology this is only one example <coughs> I under the data center I can have a different rooms and under rooms there are different racks under the rack if, the, if this virtual machines virtual servers then you can have a virtual room and under it at the bottom is our data node so this is only one example the user can customize it according to its demand and by default we provide a compatible uh, two-layer structure compatible with uh, HDFS so with this uh, topological support naturally we will think of uh, how to optimize uh, the ozone's uh, data uh, reading data access flow. This is the uh, one representation. The client on the rep, rep two is about to access the, the object, and the object uh, has three replicas stored uh, in uh, rack two and rack three. One data node in rack three, and the client will uh, communicate with uh, the manager that I'm about to access the object 
and I will give you the key. You should tell me the locality, and the other manager will recognize、uh, the location、uh, of the client, and based on the location of the client, to based on the distance. And、to the client, there will be a priority、uh, list. There will be a distance list, and this list will be used, will be based because of、uh, the rank two is closest to the client. Then it's ranked as、uh, the, 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 as the first choice, and the client will access the data、uh, through the rank two because it's local storage. It will enable faster access. This is a typology where writing process. It has open and closed states. When the container is open, you cannot move this location. It's going to build up a wrapper ring. And after the container is closed, the wrapper ring will stop. So this container can freely move around these clusters. Can do some topology as well. It can migrate to the locations that is more suitable to it, and at the same time, guarantee the reliability of the data. You are not going to put all the replicas on the same nodes on the same rack. We can put it across different racks, or deploy it. To different applications, some application will have its demand. Maybe it will require its data to be deployed across different database, and you can utilize this information to migrate this container to the places that the client want. Let's review the K、uh, the KBS concept. First, it's an open source project, and also it's providing the Microsoft microservices, and、uh, this class has been used in our release, so it will be very convenient for us to use it. Apart from the Uh, what we mentioned in the framework, like the、uh, data log and、uh, different tools, we also compliant with the S3 gateway and API. We also have some other like encryption tools and functions as well. As for the cloud native, is supported by the KBS and also have the、um, has the topology aware writing as well that can be used on cloud. We can better utilize topology on cloud environment. <laughs> and this is our suggestion on of the framework for deployment. We the nat the cloud native will support this framework, and it's quite easy to build it up. We have four components here. One is OM, and we suggest the、um, step for step services as for SDM, and also we can use the default step for step services as well. This service can use the replication. You can utilize even multiple replications, and for S3 gateways, you can deploy more because it can enhance the efficiency of the system. And next is the demon sense, so that we can better schedule different nodes, and there will be instance for these different nodes. And next is the roadmap version, because many communities are promoting the the Ozone project, and we have accumulated a lot of experience in the Ozone community and utilizing it on this project. 
So this project has developed quite fast, and we are going to release new versions every two to three months. And in Ozone two point one, we have um, support supported the compatible file system, and also able to support the natively support the Spark, Yarn, and Hive. And on the zero point three version, we support the S three gateways, gateway, and also we have push the deployment in the Q KBS on our version 4, 0.4. And also on open 4.1, we also work on the CSI support. It will be better help us to deploy the QBS storage. It can storage it on the on-prem. And that will support the non-big data applications. We also have an awesome operator. It can work with Rook. It will better for the deployment in the KBS. And it will be more user friendly for the clients. Thank you very much. And here is the official website of Ozone. If you are interested in it, you can try to use it. There are a lot of guides there. You can try step by step. Thank you. If you have any question, you can ask. I have two questions here. First, in the current production environment, is it better to deal with the scalability? Is, a, is there any good solutions for also? Maybe I can answer these questions first. I can repeat it here. In the real production environment where we're using ozone, what kind of uh, what's the scale of the utilization? And now, in some of the production environments of the users, it's like some of the testing projects. They are going to redirect some of the resources to the to, to the ozone. We have about 250 nodes that for the biggest one, and haven't exceed the haven't grows up to more than 1,000. But from the perspective of the ozone nodes, it can address um, even up to 10,000 nodes. It, it will be even better than the H HDFS theoretically. So as for ozone. So in the market environment, and for the migration, next is for the migration solution. Last year, we have done the uh, SDFS upgrade to the ozone, and this upgrade has some has minimized the data copy. <laughs> so that we can understand the format on the data level to use different of split to handle the upgrade of that. And it's going to use a large amount of DICT and some of the other tools to um, deal with the data. You can have a look at it on HD, HDDS GLOP and I can give you a follow up. And then we have some posts on the community as well. We want to convert this data, but not to copy the original data. I have two questions. Please use the microphone. I can answer this question. We use the RAP technology in Ozone, and RAP is the in independent project. 
When we handle a large amount of I.O. route, it's just trying to deal with some of small data update upgrade. And Redis is trying to solve these problems. It's a, a library, and we use some uh, micro benchmark and use this to deal with the bandwidth problems. Originally, based on Raft, if you need to do some synchronized I/O and Raft commit, there will be some of the performance problems. And all of the Raft is working on the AFC model and have two phase. So we can theoretically achieve the performance requirement that is suitable to SDFS and HDFS writing functions. And in some of the small doctors, can even be better than the HDFS functions. The next, after the container is closed, if I want to modify this data, how can we deal with it? Our solution is that we are going to tell the client after the there is a state on SSM, if you want to write on it and they will have some and have some um, command saying that it's on the pending close state, if the client's writing on it and they will and they will require maybe it will be rejected but it will require to be right on new blocks for example i want to blow up some changes to the document and we found that the original state has been closed and then maybe i will write it on the new container to um on the new location as for the functions maybe i can make some supplement mentory point here now as for the ozone writing, it's uh, quite quick already. There was some data supporting this. Okay. Is there any samples, for example, on uh, HDD? Uh, what's the specific time used on it? Maybe I need to check. I want to ask another question. Where we can check? the data that you have been working on and give us as a reference and we are going to and uh, utilize the blocks to share some of this information with you we also want to know that you think it's stable during this process anything should be improved for example, how about the network? It depends on the disk that you're using. As for the network, I'm not quite sure. Because we're utilizing the real network. But it's the 10 gigabytes network. And some is use, still using the one gigabyte. If it's ten gigabytes, and utilizing its GB, so maybe it will be a little bit slow sometimes. And some clusters will use SSD to speed up one to two SSDs to speed up because now the functions of SSD is very good. Maybe it's similar to the web <laughs> disks already. And we also want to have a look at data. And can you share some with us for its performance? And you also tell us about the roadmap. Is there a timetable for this roadmap? Or when you... Um, is there an expectation of some new release? And by the end of July, we are going to have the uh, 0.5.0 release. It's going to achieve the production quality and it has a high ability and can increase its availability release. We also will include it into our products and put it into the operator. 
list so that the open source community and community products can come in line. And I think the absolute release is very important, can cover all the cases and also are able to provide a lot of benchmark results and performance data as well. And if it's 0.5.0, if it's able to be stable, we're working on the market and environments and it's 10 scored scale 0 to 10 is 10. Maybe we can communicate here. I just want to know about the maturity of this. Maybe we can talk about it privately. 